Okay, so this is the challenge uh, for all of us. Uh, this is a challenge for all my clients. This is a challenge for me. I want to say on a daily basis, but I'll definitely say on a, on a week on a week to week basis. When, for whatever reason, whether you're in a good mood, you're in love, you're in a, you're in a, you're depressed, you're in a sad mood, you're tired, you're burnt out, you're fearful, you don't feel like taking action on your goals, your dreams, your visions, and your purpose. And today, that's one of those days for me. And, and, and I'm gonna coach you through it and explain how I coach myself through it. So for me, uh, I'm actually in a really good relaxed mood. I could just sit in the coffee shop all day and do nothing. It wouldn't be the worst thing. On another side, that could be catastrophic uh, for my success and the success of my clients and people that follow me and all the other goals that I set and the habits that I've spent a lot of time and strength building up. So in this situation, I always go back to knowing the consequences and, and, and respecting the consequences of not taking action, of letting yourself off the hook, of doing those, I guess sometimes you're giving up, you don't realize you're doing it and you're making excuses. Sometimes I've done it, sometimes I use money as an excuse. If I make money, it makes me a bit happy. So it's like, well, I don't have to go and take action because I made some money in my business. You can even do it in, in, a, in, um, in attracting women or relationships. It's like, well, I don't have to take action and suffer, push myself because I'm begging someone very beautiful, or, you know, or you know, things are going well. We, we will rationalize it in any which way that we can um, because we all have a part of us that doesn't want to suffer, especially when we've suffered and then we're in a good place. So I've kind of come to this understanding that I used to, I used to think that, oh, it's only hard for people to take action when they're depressed or they're down. There's, there is truth in that, there's no doubt about it. But I've realized that in some ways it's even harder to take action when your life's going really well and you're feeling good. Because the way your mind will think is, well, why should I take action when I've been happy already? What's the point? I don't want to jeopardize it. I don't want to risk being hurt or undoing it or losing things. But it's all a trick. You have to come back to the fundamental truth is if you're not growing, you're dying inside. You're not happy. If you're not challenging yourself, you're not continuing to build your self-esteem um, and add value to other people and all those things. You're just not moving forward. You're not living life. You're playing it safe. And I think for me, the most dangerous place on planet Earth, the most dangerous place I've ever visited, visited is uh, the comfort zone. Because in the comfort zone, all dreams are crushed. And in the comfort zone, we're all vulnerable to mental health problems. Isolation, loneliness, paranoia, negative thoughts, negative beliefs, schemas. We doubt ourselves. So when we step outside the comfort zone and we go through those mini wars and we face what we need to face and we do what we need to do or we say what we need to say, we feel great after. And then you can go back into your comfort zone. I haven't got, obviously I haven't got a problem with that. It's not like live 24 hours a day in suffering and taking action. That's, that's not really healthy. It's about coming outside the comfort zone. I, I would say, I would say an hour to three hours every single day of suffering and growing if you want to be the best person you can be and you want to succeed. And when, uh, please understand me guys. When I say if you want to succeed, I mean big on that. I don't just mean selfishly. When, I, when I'm saying that, I don't just mean I want to succeed, it's all about me. Because it's true what my mentor Jeff said, if it's all just about me, I'm going to be depressed again. It's not going to work. It's, it's not a great truth. It's about me succeeding so I can help others to succeed and feel good about that. And for the same for you, every client that I work with and teach, I try and pass on the values that my parents brought me up with, that I've learned from faith, that I've um, lived by, and that's, listen, Help yourself out first and foremost. You've got to love yourself. You've got to help yourself. You've got to get yourself good and help other people along the way. And when you help yourself and others, life is amazing. So a combination of things to make you happy. We, we need to be growing and suffering regularly. We need to be succeeding selfishly for ourselves and we need to be helping other people. Now, if some people might say, well, how can I help someone? I'm, I don't have anything. I'm not a coach. I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a leader or anything. Listen, don't need to be a coach to help people. Just be kind, man. Just be nice to people. Just be, and I'm not talking fake nice. Forget about that. Be truthful. Try and help people out if you can. We've all got skills that other someone hasn't got. So help them move house. Kind words. Listen. You know, be an be an ear, be an ear to lend on. It's not rocket science. It's simple. But obviously, to do all these things, you've got to come outside your comfort zone. And um, just saying this now, just teaching it and affirming it, I feel great, I feel good, it feels right inside. 
because it is the right way to live. I've tried the other ways, they don't work, where you just sit about and you're just praying to keep the demons away from the door and you're just, oh, I don't want to deal with life, life, money, relationships, health, responsibility, challenges, confrontation, good things coming. And you, and you listen, you can handle it. You've handled it thus far uh, and you can, um, you can uh, handle much more. So like I said, the most dangerous place I've ever been to in my life, and I've been to some dangerous areas. I grew up in a rough area, but the area that I grew up with, grew up in, was was nowhere near as dangerous as my comfort zone. And my comfort zone was always in the apartment, in the flat, sitting in the flat on your own, you know, worrying about things, and you go through all sorts of negative thoughts. I've been through all of them. I know, I know the patterns that you're having right now. You start thinking that I can't trust anyone. No one likes me. Uh, it's hard outside, I'm not going to make it, I'm going to be shamed, I'm going to be put down, I'm not good. You got, you, it's, none of this is true, but you have to get outside the comfort zone. And when you come outside the comfort zone and start taking action, you don't get that thought process. You get, you get good emotions, you, you feel aligned, and things start working out, and you start believing in yourself, and then there's an automatic positive dialogue that takes place inside your head. So this is something that I really help all my clients with, at whatever stage they're at. And at the moment, one of my clients, he's at a stage where he's just built massive success in his life. He's seriously growing. Um, but I had to, we went over some stuff so that he doesn't let his mind sabotage what he's built. And that's really what this is about. This is about being mindful and aware intelligent of our, of our all, we all have it, our sabotaging patterns. What do our sabotaging patterns do? What's the worst sabotaging pattern in the world? Let's see if you guys can guess, I've realized, because there's many. The worst one is the sabotaging pattern of keeping you in your comfort zone. That's where all dreams are killed when you're in that comfort zone. You can't do anything. I know the first 15 years of my life, I just sat in my flat. I wouldn't come out of the flat. I'd just come out quickly to get some Chinese or some chocolates. I'd run back home. Didn't make any money. Didn't get a girlfriend. Couldn't help anyone. Couldn't go to the gym. Couldn't grow. Couldn't improve my mental health. I was just, I was living and existing but I was dying inside, I was having panic attacks every day. And it was all down to what I've explained in this video in this last uh, seven minutes or so, because I was in the danger zone, I was in the comfort zone, and my mind was getting the better of me. So get the better of your mind by coming out to the comfort zone. And when you get used to living like this, it is, it's amazing. And I've said before, I'm not, listen, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard. It's hard for everyone and it's hard for me, but it's a good hard, it's worth it. But it's no more harder than not doing it and I'll, I'll end on these words. I like this video because everything I've said is all from my own heart, but I like to quote smart people. And when I quote their words, I'm living them. Uh, Teddy Atlas says, it's harder to quit um, than it is to continue. And what he means by that is what I've outlined in this whole video, because when you quit, you've got to live with the consequences, the regret, the pain, it's, 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 it's agony, it's horrible, I tried it. Keep going, fearless.